The biggest game changer in mid-game Factorio is when you unlock bots. Suddenly, you can just copy and paste a chunk of your factory, and your flying minions will swoop in to do all the fiddly building work for you. There's a little bit more to them than this, though, so let's take a look into bots and logistics. Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio. There are several components to a robo-system. The robots themselves, the roboports that they live in and, and work between, the chests so that they can interact with, and then finally the blueprints placed by the player. The Roboport network is formed by placing down multiple Roboports within range of each other, allowing you to cover as much of your factory as you want. When you place your second Roboport, you'll want to make sure it's close enough to the first one that they link together. This is shown by this dashed line between them. If you place them too far apart, you'll have created two separate Robo networks and the bots won't fly between them, meaning requests from one can't be fulfilled by the parts or robots in the other. This can be useful if you want to separate an outpost network from the rest of the factory, or if you want to limit the distance the robots will fly, because they are quite slow. But most of the time you'll find that you have a core network which is fully linked up across the main part of your factory. You'll also notice that there are two highlight colours that show when you mouse over a roboport. The inner orange area shows the logistics coverage of the roboport. This is the area in which the bots will interact with chests and with the player. The outer green area is the construction coverage. This is the area in which the robots will attempt to build blueprints. When you place roboports at their maximum connected distance, the orange areas will just touch, but the green areas will overlap. This means that you can place down a grid of roboports at their maximum distance using construction bots, rather than having to place them all by hand. This is a very useful way to expand, but it can be quite slow as the robots won't start trying to place a roboport until the previous one has been built and given power. When you initially unlock the Logistic Robotics and Construction Robotics res researches, you will get the first two types of chest, plus, of course, the robots to work with them and the roboports for them to live in. This happens relatively early on in the game using blue science packs, allowing you to start using the bots in a relatively simple way. I'll start by talking about the yellow storage chest. If a robot is carrying something and it doesn't know what else to do with it, it'll just dump it into a yellow chest. It will, if it can, prioritise a chest which already contains some of that item, so you do get an element of natural sorting happening, but you can't rely on it. If you ever want to, you can apply a filter to a yellow chest with this slot at the bottom here. This will tell the bots to only ever put that type of item into the chest, allowing you to create a sort of early game green chest, but if the chest fills up, they'll still put those items in other unfiltered yellow chests and won't tidy up again if the uh, main chest empties again later. Along with the yellow chest, when you unlock basic logistics, you'll also get the red passive provider chest. As the name suggests, this chest makes items available for bots to come and collect if they want to, but won't actively push them out there. So if you put one of these in on the output of your belt building assembler, and they are needed somewhere else, they'll be brought out. As a side note, you can set inserters to run until there's a certain amount of an item in the logistics network. This is a great way to make sure your machines don't overproduce. There is a secret zeroth type of chest as well, the player. Once you unlock logistics, your inventory will gain this middle section. Here you can set a logistics request by clicking in any of the squares, and then selecting a resource type, such as belts or wood. You also get to choose two numbers here. On the left, you can set the minimum amount your inventory should contain. If you ever fall below this number, bots will bring more out to you. And on the right, you can set the maximum. If you go over this, then bots will come and take some away. For example, if you're tinkering with the layout of your assemblers, you might want the robots to keep you supplied with the basic parts, belts, assemblers, inserters and so on, whilst automatically taking away any wood or stone that you pick up as you're clearing space for the buildings. Once these requests are set up, make sure you've got personal logistics and auto trash turned on at the top of the window, and then whenever you're in an orange roboport zone, the logistics bots will keep you supplied. Do note that construction bots can't bring items to the player, or between chests, they only build and deconstruct things. The other thing you can do with bots at this stage is to automate building, and this is a complete game changer. You can now build a sub-factory and then copy it as a blueprint by pressing Ctrl C or using the copy button on the toolbar, and then drag over the area you wish to copy. 
These blueprints can be kept in your inventory as items, added to the blueprint manager, or just kept in the paste buffer. I'll talk a bit more about this in the next video, but for now, just know that if you hold shift and rotate the mouse wheel, you can scroll through the most recent things you've copied. This is very useful. Blueprints can also be rotated by pressing R, or flipped by pressing F. However, do note that you can't flip a blueprint if it contains certain buildings, such as chemical plants, refineries and stations. You can now place your blueprint simply by clicking in the world. Once you've placed a blueprint, the construction bots will fly off to grab the required parts, assuming they're somewhere inside the logistics network, and they will prioritise getting supplies from yellow chests and then from red chests at this stage. Note you can also place a blueprint from the map view as well, which is extremely useful for placing large blueprints accurately. You can also build a portable roboport, which fits into the more advanced armours. With this, you become a walking roboport and yellow chest, although one that can't actually link to the main network. This means that if you have some construction bots in your inventory, they will build any nearby blueprints for you, using the supplies in your inventory. If you're standing by a blueprint and it's not being built, you may have turned your personal roboport off by pressing Alt-R, or by clicking the button in the toolbar, you might be missing the required supplies, or there might already be bots on their way from the main network coming out to build that area already. This is all extremely useful, and covers about 95% of what I use bots for. However, buried further down the tech tree is an additional research called Logistics System. This requires yellow science, and so is pretty late game, but it gets you the other three types of chest. The most useful of these, in my experience, is the blue requester chest. When you open one of these, you can set requests, and then the logistics bots will attempt to fulfil those requests by bringing items from the rest of the logistics network and depositing them into the blue chest. The most obvious uses for these is for bringing parts out to an assembler, so you don't need to bring them in by belt. Or perhaps you could use them for loading up a construction or outpost train, without, again, needing to bring the resources in by belt. Personally, I'm not a fan of bot-heavy logistics, unless it's for very small quantities, but I know that some people do like them. The next chest type is the green buffer chest. These can be programmed like a blue chest, and will request resources from yellow, red or purple chests, but resources can be taken from them for building, for blue chests, if the blue chest is set to request from buffer chests, or for the player. My main use for these is for intermediate products. For example, if you have your yellow belt assembler output into a green chest, you can configure it to stop running when there's 500 belts available. These belts can then be picked up by bots for construction, or passed straight into your red belt assembler to be upgraded to red belts. However, if you also configure it to request an enormous quantity of yellow belts from the logistics network, then when you upgrade some yellow belts to red, the old belts will be picked up by the construction bots and put into the green chest to be made into the better red belts, rather than just disappearing off to be hidden away in a yellow chest somewhere on the other side of the factory. The final type of chest is the purple active provider chest. These I don't personally use very much, uh, I tend not to have a need for them. They're similar to red chests, in that logistics bots and construction bots can take stuff from them. However, they actively want to get rid of their contents, rather than just making it available. So anything you put in one of these chests will be taken away and put into any available yellow chest as soon as possible. This puts the chests into a neat hierarchy order. The bots will first take items from the player's trash slots and purple chests as a priority whether they're wanted or not, and will dump the items in another available chest if they're not needed. The next priority is to take required items from yellow chests or green chests, as these are intended as temporary storage. Finally, if the item isn't available anywhere else, the bots will take them from a red chest. The bots prioritise for targets as well. The player is the top priority for supplies, followed by any blue chests which are requesting that item, then any green chests which are requesting it. Finally, if there's nowhere else to put it, it will get dumped into a yellow chest. Most of the time, you don't need to worry about this priority order. If you use the chests in the correct places, then the bots will generally be able to work it all out for you, but it is at least worth knowing that there is an order. All chests can be connected to the circuit network and output their contents, logistics chests and basic chests. I recommend watching my Circuit Network's basics video for information on that. But blue and green chests have an additional option. 
When these chests are connected, you can configure them to set requests, which means that they will request any items on the incoming signal. This is an advanced use of, of these chests, but it can be very powerful. Note that any negative numbers on the circuit network will be ignored by the chest. This covers how to use bots. There are a few more advanced possibilities, including connecting the circuit network to a robot port, but that's not really part of this topic. If you do have any questions about this, though, please leave them in the comments. I may well do a follow-up video if I get a lot of them. Next time, I shall be talking about blueprints and how to do more than just copy and paste a chunk of your factory, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that one. Finally, if there's anything else you'd like to see me do a tutorial about, please let me know, and I'll see what I can do. See you next time. Bye-bye.